physics video. Yay. So anyway, uh, Piero and Hoffaday had this hangout thing, right? And uh, Great Dex showed up and farted and belched. Um, but anyway, they did, they did treat him sort of like shit. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Um, so anyway, so they did some physics here in the middle. At the beginning, it was just this, this um, you know, uh, economic thing. And, and, you know, Piero is a big defender of this, you know, employees owning it. We've already had this discussion. You, can, you know, as soon as you create owners, you're out of the game, okay? Owner psychology, you might as well just create vampires. I mean, as soon as I'm an owner of something, I'm going to start thinking in my personal interest. <laughs> And, you know, I want extra days off, and I want this, and I want that. I mean, it just doesn't work. You can't have unions. You can't have owners. You can't have any of that bullshit. Um, you got to have consumers and workers, and they got to... When you're a consumer, you have to be <laughs> voting for the workers, you know, to keep them under control. And when you're a worker, you have to be voting against the consumers and keep them under control, that kind of thing. you got to split it in half. you got to recognize that there are two voters, you're two interests. You're a working person and you're a consumer and both of those people have an interest. And both of those interests have to be represented. But we don't need no fucking owners. That part's true. But we don't yeah, we don't need no owners. Employee owners, frog owners, alien owners. We just don't need no fucking owners. Anyway, so, time to the physics part. So, the physics part started up here, and it was just this tedious pile of mumbo jumbo. Just phantasmagorical crap all the way through. Just, just absolute crap. Bullshit all over the place. So, at least half the day, at least on the field theory, he just kind of does make the argument. What do you mean, field? Field of what? Made out of what? <laughs> What's your medium for your field? Uh, what's your mechanism? Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a stupid word, right? You might as well just say the unknown variable. Because it's just, an, it's just a made-up. Well, we can't, we don't know what it is, so we'll just say it's the made-up thing. But we call it a field instead. But it's just a made-up thing. So anyway, um, so eventually towards the end here, they do get to my brilliant theory. And, um... <laughs> you know, they have to make some concessions to it, uh, but nothing specific, of course, uh, nothing specific enough. And, um, you know, and then Piro just goes on this silly diatribe about his, you know, hero, hero worship and how I have to pay proper reverence, um, you know, to the people who I think ruined physics. I mean, I think they ruined physics by selling it as the mumbo-jumbo, woo-woo bullshit, by selling the math instead of selling a rational search for a rational model. And Feynman is specifically, you know, and I've said my piece on Feynman, right? I hated Feynman, then I really liked Feynman. I loved his, his the character of his personal life in, in many respects, parts of his personal life anyway, his first wife and everything. It was just an amazing story. Um, and uh, I liked him as a person, okay? But I'm just saying, as a physicist, as a lecturer, okay, this crap might have gone over for the masses, but it was really bad lecturing. It was a really bad explanation of the science, okay? He was dishonest to the truth to make it publicly consumable, and it wasn't even publicly consumable, <laughs> which is the irony. So he compromised it to make it more consumable to the, uh, you know, somewhat industrially uh, 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 capable. But um, it was just a deception. It was just not, it wasn't the truth. And that's just bullshit. Physics is too important to be fluffing over, to start talking about giraffes reaching for leaves and stretching their necks. And that's essentially what he was talking. He was talking pretty much bullshit, and he, and he should just called himself on it. And that's my, that's my accusation. Now, if that's too much of an accusation to make, well, fuck you. Uh, as for Einstein, yeah, I didn't care for his personal life at all. Uh, kind of thinking he's pretty much a fucking asshole. <laughs> you know, fucking his kid and everything. Um... You know, not a whole, just not a, not a brilliant start to his career, actually. Um, and he's just another guy, I think, just lived on the laurels. And, uh, you know, um, and, and frank, frankly, he's just wrong. And he's wrong in such a fundamental way that, again, just took physics on this idiotic detour. Okay, and it's just a detour, this whole bent space bullshit. Um, another fake medium. Space just does all this magical stuff, and the matter is obedient to the magical space. 
physicists should have said this that just no <laughs> no that just doesn't sound right that nothing is doing the something why isn't the something doing something I think the something should be doing something I don't think the nothing should be doing something that doesn't seem right nothing doing something no that does not seem right something doing something ah now that makes sense and, they should have, and Einstein knew that because Einstein was a he was a particleist and uh, you know, and he, he he jumped ship, you know, and, and went for the woo woo um, because he could throw together some slop that sounded okay, but it just sounds okay. It ain't really at its core okay. It's a little bit rotten. Okay, so saying that is outrageous. I'm not allowed to do that. Suskind is a friend of Feynman's, right? Um, and yeah, a lot of his lectures are good, good science, good math, most of the mostly. But you know, come on. Black hole theories? This is all just bullshit. Light getting sucked back into the black hole? Where's your evidence of that? Where's your evidence that any light ever tried to get out of the black hole? No evidence. Nothing. <laughs> Light's moving the speed of light. <laughs> Do I have to tell people that? That it can't slow down and stop and then go backwards? Yeah, I can't do that. <sighs> and, and number two... <laughs> Light's not going to be affected by gravity. Light's not affected by gravity. Light is affected by interaction with photons. And this is where back to Feynman, okay? So, you know, I hate I'm doing all this preface work, but... Um, so, so Feynman knew that. And that's what's irritating about Feynman, right? He kept selling this woo-woo mystery thing. When he, he said it explicitly in one of his 1950 lectures there, right? The fourth lecture, I think, when he was showing the electron and the photon interacting with the electron. He was drawing a Feynman diagram of the interaction of an electron with a photon, <laughs> right? And right next to it, he drew, he drew a little picture, A, B, and he said, Well, look, all this woo-woo, okay? But the thing you got to know about light is it goes from point A to point B in a straight line at the speed of light. So he said it, all right? And so when he said those words, he should have said also, look, what quantum mechanics is about is what electrons do to photons. Because obviously photons aren't doing anything but going from point A to point B in a straight line at the speed of light. And so something's making them, if they're going someplace you don't expect them to go, they're going there because an electron threw them there. And that's how they got there. And so he had it. And then my other critique of Feynman is that he took that Lesage theory, the 200-year-old uh, graviton theory, the theory that photons, photonic gravity, wasn't really photons, but that's what I'm calling it, particle gravity. And he, he just, he shot all over it. And, and a really sloppy, lazy shit. Okay? And, and you know, th th this is a guy Piero defends as somebody who's willing to, you know, uh, accept models and ideas, but he wasn't okay. He was so close-minded. His his statement was pretty much, you know. And I've played the clips. You know, if if we me and Einstein can't think of it, nobody else is going to come up with it. Model, you no, know, let go with a model idea. Just do the math. All right. And the problem with the Lesage thing for him was it was a model, and he didn't like it. All right. And he he annihilated it for. Complete bullshit reasons. Any physicist, a physicist should have known. Light doesn't fill voids. Light doesn't, light, light doesn't, <laughs> light is a, is moves in a straight line, as he, he knew. And so it doesn't go around corners and fill voids of pressure. Uh, number two, pin, pool table, kinetics. Okay, we, we, he, he, he knew more than anybody else, right? Feynman knew more than anybody else that electrons were essentially filters. That some light went right past them, right through them. They didn't even, I don't care. And some photons banged into them. They were stopped immediately. So that substances could be opaque to different frequencies of photons. That somehow this was important. That somehow these electrons were filtering photons. So he couldn't understand that there could be a photon that could be filtered by no electron. And that kinetically it can't be subdivided. It can only change, it can only exchange directional information. He couldn't understand that when, you know, physicists, classically a physicist is always going to be running the pool table in their brain, you know, the frictionless pool table, and always trying to get a grasp of that idea. I think, I think that would be the first, at least it was my first 
understanding of physics was the frictionalist world and and just understanding infinite movement you know that something will vibrate forever theoretically until that vibration is consumed by some parallel vibration something moves exactly the same way and the two end up blending into each other to create some new manifestation you know but it's it's always this like i could if i if the world was dead quiet and i just banged my hand on this desk this did this that sound that vibration that energy goes right through the earth and it could be heard theoretically in china in fiji i mean that's the the reality of this this energy it doesn't stop it doesn't go it, it's always moving and it's all about the and what, what makes it detectable is directionality and directionality can be lost when, when there's enough chaos enough pool balls banging into each other and you can have a you can you can create a pattern in those pool balls you can get them all to be swirling around and then you interject an eccentricity in and it'll break that entire pattern eventually it'll go through that entire system and it will create chaos in that system i mean these are things physicists would think of and i'm just saying the fact that Feynman would discount the photon theory of gravity for something idiotic like heat <laughs> or friction when he could understand that oh yes in, in a world where things are just exchanging direction there is no friction there is no such thing as momentum these things aren't 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 elements that carry with them energy they are energy and i'm just saying he got lazy and he was selling too hard an idea that was too incomplete and he was too satisfied with that incompleteness just like this guy this guy wants an incomplete theory because it gives him room for the three bears and goldilocks and little red whiting hood he can put all his little fantasy characters into this reality okay if he leaves physics incomplete and i think Feynman was comfortable with that because he was considered the wizard he was the wizard of oz and he didn't want the curtain pulled back and and he had no interest let's put it that way he had no interest in the deception being revealed for just a bunch of hoo-hoo, all this quantum crap. Because there was no quantum crap. There was interactions between electrons and uh, uh, photons. And Feynman was always talking about the jiggling, right? He was always talking about the jiggling, <laughs> right? The, the obvious wave being created by the jiggle of the electron. Um, <clears throat> and he would talk about the photon jiggling the electron. But he didn't talk enough about the electron jiggling the photon as it goes out. So anyway, so that's probably enough of a preface. So let's uh, play some of this crap and, you know, uh, you know, look, you know, you know, Piero's just being an asshole. I mean, he's being very unscientific in, in the first place, right? He's going to get, he's going to get all wet pantied because I'm not showing proper respect to a, to, to theories I intend to destroy because I think they're not true. I think they're caustic to rational physics. And so, yeah, I'm a little bit aggressive. Um, and I think I kind of have to be. You can't, you can't blend Einstein bent space crap into a materialistic view of the universe. You can't bend his, his general art special relativity theories into rational dynamics. It's not blendable. It's not repairable. It's fundamentally wrong. And I think when you're saying somebody's fundamentally wrong, you got to be a little aggressive about it. There is a, this location. It is an electron. That's why we see multiple electrons. That's why it's copied. That's not even their problem. Their issue is like, okay, we accept that. We want to see that the electron is really the same as the proton as well. You know, they want to see that there really is one thing, and it's a quark, and all its different modes create the different things in the same way that all the stuff we yeah they want they want right so this is all you people keep talking about is what you want physics to be rather than what you know let's make a rational model c is from just you know a few dozen elements right. is that's that what, what they want to see. he's trying to say like everything's a photon right 
Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, and I agree with that idea. I, his whole little bit, it's its very much a poem to me. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, what the hell is that, right? I mean, I couldn't be more explicit in it. And yes, I'm metaphoring it to a school of fish, but that's no different than Einstein metaphoring curved fabric in space. All right, so this is no, there's no poetry here whatsoever. I don't know, how, how, how could he even say it's like a poem? I'm talking about explicit particles and explicit Newtonian dynamics, okay? And there, there's no poem here. There's no, there's no uh, mushy vagueness. The whole point is to be quite explicit, to understand everything as explicit. Uh, what's the word? Discrete matter, stuff, energy, discrete energy with discrete functions. But as a poem, I would agree with it, like his idea that, hey, everything must really be moving at light speed, but it's going in a circle, so it looks like it's not. That's pretty much what I agree think when you <laughs> yeah, I mean you know go and listen to the rest of this video and then see if you could find the part where he thinks something like that he thinks that photons in the two slit experiment for example fly all the way to Saturn because it's a possibility fly all the way to Saturn bounce off of Saturn and it, they're not moving the speed of light anymore somehow time has been suspended so they can bounce it all over the whole universe then they come all the way back here and then they bounce through the slit he thinks that's taking place, yet yet he'll he'll say something like, "Well, yeah, that makes sense to me. They they're, they're caught in patterns, and they're still moving the speed of light, and energy is matter." And oh yeah, that makes sense. Well, the two theories, the two statements, Pierrot can't make sense. So you're just talking out of both of your orifices, and it's I I can't tell which one's closer to something called a brain. Have E M C E equals M C squared. Yeah, everything's still energy somehow. It's just wrapped up in some little, you know. Yeah. The problem I have with him is that he wants to call Feynman an asshole and ignore all. <laughs> yeah, so that's his problem. His problem is he doesn't like my personality. Oh shit! How scientific. And and I've explained my reasons to be mad at Feynman. Okay, and it's they're not personal reasons. Okay, there are reasons to do with the fact that, look, he shouldn't have been doing public lectures talking about surfaces of the glass when he was doing math that approximated the interior of the glass, right? So he was talking as if, well, look, all you need to know is the surface. We think about it conceptually as surfaces, but all he was really talking about is, you know, that's the top and bottom of a container, and the container is full of all the real deal. The real deal is the stuff in the container, okay, not the surfaces of the container. Yes, you can define the 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 uh, substance of the activity by putting it in a container, but you have to recognize that the activity is happening in the container, not on the surfaces of the container. And I'm just saying that was a fundamental distortion. Uh, it just wasn't accurate, okay? His lecture wasn't accurately describing what was happening and he was pretending like it was very mysterious. He was, he was poising the question, how does the photon know how thick the glass is at the surface when the photon isn't reflecting off the surface? You see, I mean, that's just, you know, that's a pretty thick deception. And it deserves to be pointed out that that's probably not the way to be doing physics the mathematics that describes that situation which is like no dude you've got to acknowledge the mathematics I don't have to acknowledge a lot of mathematics okay especially mathematics like Feynman concedes you even he even talks about it early in this video you know the whole wheel turning thing and all Feynman's doing with that wheel turning thing is saying yeah it doesn't it doesn't matter the patterns always the same so it doesn't matter how many times the thing goes around and around and around it doesn't matter how long the distance gets right so the time thing has to do with distance and what Feynman was saying quite, uh, quite overtly is this math doesn't have anything to do with distance. It just has to do with the pattern because the pattern duplicates itself over the distance. It's always the same pattern. The waveform is always the same waveform. So all you need is a tiny section of reality to, to detect the pattern, and then you can just presume the pattern for the rest of the distance. Damn, I missed an auction. Oh well, shit happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so so that's all. He see Feynman's basically saying it, but again he's not saying it explicitly. So again it's this deception.
effects of this situation by your predecessors and stand on their shoulders. And if you don't do that, then I well, again, I, I, you know, I am doing that in the sense that I'm saying you fuckers have been maligning Newton, okay, forever. All you fucking modern physicists keep taking a shit on Newton. Newton was ten times the man of any of us. Newton was an amazing fucking human being. The shit he got done in his goddamn life and the fucking relationships he was able to dissect with such crude instrumentality is goddamn fucking amazing. And you fuckers seem to have no appreciation whatsoever for Newton because you want to all play with your fucking Play-Doh space. Um, you know, so that sort of pisses me off, fucker. If we're going to exchange what pisses us off, if that's going to be how we have scientific conversations about, well, how much do you hate some, <laughs> some character of history? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Don't argue the argument. Argue bullshit, fucker. My argument is that gravity is made out of photons. Why don't you fucking argue that, fuckface? I can't take you seriously. Yeah, well, whatever. I mean, this is just such bullshit. I don't give a fuck about you taking me seriously. I'm saying take the goddamn statements I'm making seriously. Take the goddamn theory that goddamn gravity is goddamn photons, motherfucker. Take that seriously. Take the kinetic reality uh, that, guess what, interactions on the kinetic level, on the pool table, are a little trickier than the ones in reality. Because the most aggressive interactions are the ones that have the least change in reality. Head-on collision, no change in reality. Uh, complete 90-degree angle collisions, no change in reality. That's kind of important, fuckface. Because science is at that level of quality now. Just, you know, yeah. uh, a level of quality. See, uh, yeah, one third of physicists, all they all disagree with each other about fundamental interpretations of the dynamics of the mechanical universe. And you're saying that science has reached some sort of physics has some sort of integrity. It, it, it's a display of integrity that to, to, to not be able to resolve some basic fundamental questions. No, I'd say you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. If you know, one third of you. Um, that you can't get more than a one-third majority on any one truth. I think he's got some really uh, imaginative, productive uh, insights that may well be uh, have some truth to them. I think there's a, there's right. a problem with the lack of maths. But we well, I don't know. What, see, again, this whole math issue, right? So, look, the gravity fits two elements of math, right? The, the photon theory. This, it's moving at the speed of light, so it fits that. And it also fits the, the R-squared bullshitty thing of distance, right? The very effect where you get one-fourth as small by twice the distance. Yeah, that, that shit is right there. So how, how is there any... What, what, what I, should I duplicate mathematics? I should duplicate somebody else's mathematics? Is there any real point in doing that? Duplicating math? I don't think so. No, he's not... He's not but he does you know what? It's not a necessary uh, problem, you know, like someone that's not all boggled down with maths might see yeah. something you come up with an idea. Look, I don't even mind being boggled down with it, but, you know, frankly, I can't do the math on some of these equations, and just like Einstein just kind of sort of made up math, all right, there's no way I'm going to be able to prove absolute velocity mathematically. You're not going to be able to see the difference until you get up to preposterously fast speeds that matter will never travel. And frankly, by my theory, if I'm correct, you'll never be able to go those speeds. So yeah, it's not going to happen. But can I tell you at what speed you have degraded the matter enough where you've converted enough of the matter into energy? Look, you know, velocity is conversion of matter into energy. It's converting, it's changing. Like when, when, the, when the matter is, is uh, full of just the photons, it's caught in atoms and it's just vibrating. It's, it's directionality of its force is in all directions. When it starts moving, the force is starting to migrate into one direction. It's being essentially converted into fish moving freely in one direction. Um, and that's why there's no light coming out of black holes. Is because when matter starts going towards a black hole, okay, the gravity is so strong that the matter is converted into energy and the direction of the energy is towards the black hole. Okay, it can't, it can't be going out because it's all moving to the fish are all swimming towards the center of the black hole. They're not swimming any other direction.
idea that, that those of us that are like so constrained by the mass. Yeah, no, it's some little philosophical truth, but you know, yeah. frankly, it pisses me off enough. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, frankly, it pisses you off enough that you'll just malign me, my theory, uh, the the fact that it does answer things like time dilation and all this other stuff. You're just going to pretend it doesn't do any of that shit because of some personal crap. I mean, I can't say how. You know, I mean, that's scientific. Oh, fuck. I mean, really, do you think Feynman and Einstein liked each other? Frankly, I've never, I've never seen Feynman say a damn good thing about Einstein, ever. So you think they liked each other? Enough to not really look the other way, that he's going to also go and call Susskind and Feynman and, and all these people idiots, and, and, and not just idiots, but liars. Well, that's not true, okay? I mean, I've called the guy who made the video talking about the... the the detectors being turned off. I called him a liar because, yeah, that's just absolute bullshit. I'm sorry. It never happened. Um, but, you know, you're, you're, I'll, I'm, I'm not going to retract any words I've said about the fact that these are real deceptions. And they're obviously deliberate deceptions. So I'm just saying, what, what, do you, what do you want for the definition of a lie? When Feynman was talking about surfaces, he was lying. It's not the truth. It's not what the physics was really doing. It's not what the photons are really doing. He was not describing it accurately. I'm sorry. I mean, it's a deception. I, you know, he knew it wasn't accurate, and he did it anyway. What do you call that? It's like they misrepresented data that was before them? Fuck you. Well, whatever. You don't think it was a misrepresentation for him to talk about surfaces. It don't, you don't think it was a misrepresentation for him to talk about how... How does the photon know when he knows the photon doesn't need to know because the photon's not going to reflect until it gets into the surf into the material. The material is going to reflect the photon, not the surfaces. All right, and I could go back to the two slit experiment, and I could talk about other little jargons he used about what was happening when these photons are going through, and then I could just replay his clip saying photons move from point A to point B in a straight line. They are some of the best people we have in the history of mankind, separate from science. As yeah, whatever. The best people that we have in the history of mankind. And I, well, you know, crap. This is just absolute fucking bullshit. Newton was that guy. Human beings that faced reality, admitted their mistakes, and everything else, and and to just malign them is in that way. It's ridiculous because everyone... Yeah, whatever. Like I said, he maligned Lesage, okay? He took a shit on Lesage's head. So this is a guy 200 motherfucking years ago who thought this shit out, came up with a theory that was damn good, and just didn't have enough physics, you know, they just didn't have the tools at the time for him to make the explanation for this idea of kinetic gravity, this idea that it would only exchange directional information. Because he just didn't have enough of a model to defend his model. And by Feynman's time, we had enough of a model to defend that model. There was, there's no thermal problem. There's no uh, friction problem. Because photons and electrons do not exist in a frictioned environment. There is no friction in their universe. One of those people is ready to be bested. Every one of them knows that some young kid... <sighs> well, I'm sorry. You want, I can play a clip of Susskind pretty much maligning people who email him. <laughs> I can play... Uh, certainly, I can play Feynman basically saying, Oh, look, you know, we, they thought about models, and he, he drew the model on... He drew Lesage's model on the board, and he says, The problem with it doesn't work. That's what he did to it. Right, and he just basically said, uh, "Don't bother trying to do models. We can't do it. We're really smart. We can't do it." That was his fucking attitude, and it was a bullshit attitude for a scientist. Hundred years later, he's going to blow their theory out of the water. They assumed that by the time Einstein was around, they knew that they were working. Oh uh, yeah, whatever. Like I said, you people are just so stuck with this crap. Like I said, nobody can even say anything, and you people are saying quantum mechanics is the most proven theory in the history of mankind. It's more proven than penis love. I mean, it's just bullshit. I, I mean, you're just so full of shit. And, and that's the opposition. So, yeah, people are going to get a little hostile coming at this crap because you people are so in love with your icons. You're so got, you are so got your, the, the jeebus, the quantum jeebus up your ass, okay, that you won't even, you won't even, you won't indulge even in a conversation that might demonstrate that your jeebus is a myth. 
your quantum Jeebus. On it, and they were training students to, and hoping they would do that. So fuck him for saying that they're, they're liars. Yeah, well, fuck you. Okay, they're, they did deceive, and their theory is crap. I'm sorry, it's just crap, and I'm going to prove it. And, you know, so everybody in the future, after I'm long dead and people finally concede Gary was right, uh, go find Piro's grave and piss on it, please. It's just a fucking fad. That's not acceptable. That's too why, far. Why you get so, you've, you've said this before. Why did you get so annoyed? <laughs> okay, we have kids in the house. I'm not supposed to cuss so much. <laughs> I, I, so, uh, sorry. Sorry, I wanted to ask about Hathlo Day's uh, toy. When he was running around his apartment, he had this... Um, Oh, wow, this part's kind of boring. Um, so anyway, I don't know if there's any more physics here or not. I really don't think there's any more related to my theory. Uh, let's just jump ahead a little, see. One of them knows that some young kid, 200 Oops. years later, is going to blow their theory out of the water. They assumed that. by the t Yeah, whatever. Uh, where is that assumption built into the current conversation in physics? They're all talking with such arrogance. Okay, now they got this quantum f field theory, and they're just so arrogant and so obnoxious about it. So don't tell me that these physicists are these open-minded. Yeah, we're really looking for a model really hard. We're really trying to find the final mode core here. No, we just have a bunch of slops so far. You know, we have some math that works, but we don't have anything... We don't have a coherent model. We just have a bunch of made-up forces. And now we have quantum forces. We have quantum magic, quantum this, quantum that. We have this whole wave theory of light that has absolutely no evidence for it. Not one, not one shred of real hard evidence. You know, you, you just sit there and put the gun in the quantum's hands, and it don't got no fucking hands, fucker. Time Einstein was around. They knew that. They were working on it, and they were training students to, and hoping they would do that. So fuck him. Yeah, well, they, you can keep saying shit like that, but I'm just saying these proofs are so thin, okay? I mean, you know, um, it's like even the Einstein thing when it comes to the lensing thing, right? They put all of this energy into this idea that, oh, if we find lensing, that somehow that'll prove Einstein's entire theory of, of, of special relativity or general, yeah, general relativity. Um, and, you know, it's a, just a preposterous over-exaggeration. Lensing could be uh, uh, predicted for, by a lot of rational ways of interpreting what happens around suns especially, you know, bodies that are actually producing energy and have a whole corona around them. Yeah, it seems pretty obvious that if photons are going to travel through electrons, that they're going to get bent for saying they're, they're liars. It's just a fucking fad. That's not acceptable. That's too far. Well, I'm sorry. It's not acceptable for people to talk about um, uh, uh, you know, matter traveling the speed of light. That's not acceptable. No evidence you can push matter anywhere near the speed of light, anywhere close to the speed of light. And, and by my theory, right, I'm basically saying that if you're going half the speed of light, that means half the fish in the school have now changed doing patterns and are now moving in one direction somewhere else. And that that's just going to break the mechanics of a, a, a system. It's no longer going to be matter anymore. It's going to fall apart. Yes, you've, you've said this before. Why did you get so annoyed? <laughs> okay, we have kids in the house. I'm not supposed to cuss so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, I don't know how I ended up backward. I, I, I'm, I'm consciously accepting that this is the kind of thing to show some anger about. But it's not a huge deal. I mean, I know that there are somewhat of my heroes and there's hero worship, and I can't expect other people to, to feel the same well, way. Well, apparently you do expect it, and so this is all just such rubbish. ...way about the people I respect, but I can still continue to respect them. And go look. The the they're not perfect, but the reasons I respect them are totally in contradiction to maligning them this way. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just saying that you know Newton put people on a path, and you, the, ever since Newton, okay, and that silly two slit experiment, uh, physics has been wandering down you know whatever Red Riding Hood road, okay, uh, fantasy land, and they've been doing it maligning Newton, which. Like I said, I could get pissed off for as a Newton fan. If you have a better theory than Feynman, if Feynman was around, he'd be one of the main people wanting to hear it if it really was. Yeah, whatever. If it really what? Like I said, I could just show you the video tape of him sitting there maligning the Lesage theory. Ripping it a new asshole on two, two, based on two properties, heat and friction, that 
I can demonstrate to be absolutely bogus if you really understand physics. I mean, if you know something about physics, okay, uh, there's no reason to think that a photon splits in half and turns into some kind of energy, because it already is energy. And so all you have to do is say, look, if the gravity doesn't get eaten by the electrons, if it's invisible to the electrons in the sense like other things, it doesn't get absorbed, it just travels through and changes direction, information, then what's the pro? Oh, that's right, there is no problem. No heat problem. Was better. And to say otherwise is kind of like, well, you know, that's too far and unnecessary. And it just shows that you're... Well, I'm sorry. I know, you know another part of this is, is look who I am. Look, I'm a, I am, I have, I have, there's, I'm sorry, but physicists are going to be humiliated. I'm going to humiliate physicists because I'm going to demonstrate that they're doing such a bad job that somebody like me, just doing a little bit, just a little bit of thinking for four fucking years about this quantum crapola, all right, and with no degrees, no intensive understanding, okay, yeah, I found it, and, and, you know, that shouldn't happen, I mean, if physicists knew what the fuck they were doing, I shouldn't be able to just walk into their race car and, you know, win the fucking race, it just shouldn't fucking goddamn happen. Theory doesn't have the kind of backing that it needs to actually backing what does that even mean <laughs> i'm sorry i mean what did uh, einstein in his patent office have his backing he didn't have anything right but what einstein did have is a wide open field right there was no einstein in einstein's way this is another reason why i'm pissed off right because you assholes you assholes are going to stick feynman and einstein and suskind in my fucking way you're going to have to you're telling me i have to go through them Okay, and that's the problem. Einstein had the open field. Nobody had a theory, so he could just throw his little, well, gravity's bent kind of funny uh, theory out there, and everybody just would eat it up. Um, but it was garbage they were eating. I mean, Einstein was, you know, you know, E equals MC squared even. You could almost say to yourself, wait a minute, you needed Einstein for that one? <laughs> I mean, we sort of knew that, didn't we? Confront. People like Bohr or Feynman. But on the other hand, I do believe there's some grains of truth. Like I said, I think some of his... Some grains of truth. Really, I want you to piss some grains of urine on this fucking guy's grave. I mean, really, what the fuck is that, some grains of truth? Why don't you dissect one fucking element of it and prove, demonstrate where it's not more... It's a hell of a lot more than a grain, buddy. Interpretation. It's just kind of poetical. He's got a poetical kind of sign. No, no, it's poetical is your fucking spooky action at a distance. Now that's poetical, okay? You're fucking, you know, you're interlaced and interwoven and, uh, you know, your, 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 your magical photons that can feel each other's love across the galaxy. Yeah, that's fucking poetical bullshit. It's that it's okay as far as poetry goes, but if you really want to get down to it, no, it's not going to cut the must. Well, whatever. It's going to cut it, and it's going to cut it so well that you're going to have a lot of piss in your head, buddy. I, I, so I played a clip where Feynman talks about not being like how um, the Mayans had this great calculation system about predicting eclipses. And he was saying, you know, some you could imagine some guy... Oh, well, this is like one of the most boring... Feynman lectures there was when I was talking about the fucking Mayan shit. <laughs> Sorry, but they, I, was, I didn't see much value in that. Um, I mean, it didn't make much sense anyway, okay? I mean, he was basically saying, you, you know, the Mayans were basically doing something where they were counting each P, and so they figured out that things happen over time because they had everything laid out in a row, and they just counted each day like a P, and they marked what happened each day, and then they noticed the pattern when they laid all the P's out, that kind of argument. It wasn't really math. It was long, hard, observed reality. And then they just looked at it and said, oh, look, there's a pattern. Universe yeah. is consistent, so suddenly you got a consistent, you still don't understand what's going on, but you can fly to the moon and that's good enough type thing. So Yeah, that's good enough, and that's the problem. That's the problem with physics. That's good enough. Has it been good enough? And that's just not good enough. And so, um, and like I said, they're not just saying it's good enough. They're saying we've got the truth, the cubit. <laughs> the wave particle duality mishmash. Yeah, right.
So anyway, so I don't know. Do I need to say something? I wanted to say something about frequency. I think. Um, so Adam's freq Adam's filter frequency, right? So I think that is just really important to understand. Adam's filter frequency. The frequency comes in. If it's not the right frequency, you go ahead. If it's the right frequency, boom, I absorb it and I shoot out a different frequency. Does it all the time with light. And light is just photons, okay, a pair of photons separated by a distance. That's what light is. That's what radio waves are. That's what cosmic rays are. That's what it all is. It's just photons separated by a distance. And the only feature photons do have is polarity, which is they have a shape. It doesn't mean much. <laughs> it doesn't do much. Um, so anyway, but it is important when it comes to magnetism. And magnetism is just the idea of polarizing the gravitons and filtering for the polarization. Uh, yep. So, I mean, look, I say, I got it all, I mean, I'll, I'll do the figure eight thing one more time. Just to, this, this is just so obvious, right? So, like a school of fish. The school of fish are all swimming in a pattern, all swimming around. That's what I mean by their energy is like this. It's going in all directions, right? And so it looks like no energy because it's in all directions, which is essentially no direction, right? They're not moving. They're just vibrating. And, uh, you know, but if you start to move those fish just a little bit, a few fish go a little extra distance in this direction. Just a few extra little fish go one little tiny inch in this direction more than they were doing before. This whole thing moves this way at a velocity and the more fish you start moving to go a little extra one more inch in this direction one more inch one more inch the more fish do that one more inch each time they do their cycle so they're doing a figure eight and they just keep now they keep moving this figure eight right so to move the figure eight they have to move a little extra distance just a few of them have to do that and but as they do that the figure eight gets slower and slower and slower and slower because they're using up more time going this way. So they're not just figure eighting anymore, now they're moving. So with velocity comes a slowdown in atomic metabolism. The metabolism of the atom slows down as you increase its, dis its, its velocity. But velocity is absolute, not relative. Uh, there's nothing breaks the speed of light and nothing distorts it. Uh, the redshift thing has nothing to do with the speed of light. It just has to do with the, uh, the separation of the photons. So when something is moving away from another thing, what's happening is, is that it's shooting out, say, um, ultraviolet light. And because it's moving away, as it shoots the photon, the next photon out, there's a bigger gap because it's moving away. And that's the redshift. Not complicated. <sighs> so anyway... Yeah, so I mean, I've got, I got it all here, okay? I've got it. I've got the unification thing. I got your quantum thing licked. I got it all licked. And uh, it's just a matter of time. And you can be on the right side and help, or you can be just a naysaying, nitpicking, uh, you know, emotional, oh, you're insulting my icons. You can't do that. My God, my Jeebus theory. You know, you're just like you're just like uh, you know the, the 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 hostility that Darwin got for threatening the religions, you know, with this evolution thing. It's the same scenario. I'm going to get this heat no matter what, because yeah, this just threatens all your phantasmagorical notions. I'm just going to do it more overtly and put the blame where it belongs. This is should be where we already were. Like I said, this Lesage guy, I mean, I thought of this, but he thought of it before me, he did. Same idea, basically, except he didn't under... I mean, I thought of it based on a kinetic model, and he probably thought of it just as a pressure model, you know, that just made sense to have pressure. So I thought of it from the baseline, um, and then realized the pressure thing matches. Um, but he did it 200 years ago. This is the model we should have been... We already should have done this school of fish thing. I mean, if you look at the Hellasage drawings, you can almost see the school of fish in it. Because it's all these little lines, you know, all the little graviton lines. Um, so it's like already there. You can already get the impression of it. Uh, stuff is just getting pushed around. There are no forces. There's just push. 
there's just influence. There's uh, exchanges and directional information. We're back to the frictionless pool table with the energy conserved and uh, the, the idea that um, all these things, all these balls, when they're banging any, into each other, all they're doing is exchanging directional information. There is no creation of energy in these interactions. These interactions just exchange directional information. And that's what the, that's what the subatomic universe is doing. It's exchanging directional information, not really energy. It's only doing the energy thing when you have the battery of an electron, the battery of an atom. An atom is like a battery. It can take in fish and it can release fish in volume. And when it's releasing fish, you have an energetic system. When it's absorbing fish, you have a cooling system. Not complicated. All right, that's probably enough for now. Till later. Such. Till next time. It'd be good if he does this every week, just so I can keep her abreast of it. But I don't know if he's going to stay on the subject of physics, but uh, it's just so bad. Like I said, if you watch the, the two hours and whatever, it's just, it's all phantasmagorical mush. You know, magic photons. It's just ironic, right? Because photons, you know, <laughs> well, my truth is, is that photons are this, they are as simple as I wish Feynman would have pointed out more often. They're the simplest thing. They're just doing one single thing. Point A, point B, speed of light. No magic. No wave. No none of that stuff. The wave happens when you compress a whole bunch of them into a little ball, and that little ball goes bouncing around. Now you have a wave. Because you have movement. Uh, collective movement. You have undirected, undirectional. Suppressed direction? That's not the right way to say it. But you have captured directionality. And that creates vibration. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, till next time.